Hey guys, welcome to this midweek video and I'm bringing you a very quick update because of a leaked press text that was shared by Andrea Pizzini. So this information is from him firsthand, right? So he caught some sight of a unreleased text that was placed up on a reseller's website. And before it was taken down, this is all that is captured. So there are a couple of exciting things that are happening and I have to share them with you before we get our confirmation, which is due in about six days times. So about this time next week, I will actually be in China and trying to lay my hands at the Hasselblad store on the Hasselblad X2D Mark II. So there are a couple of very exciting things that was leaked out, right? So I'll go through all of them very, very quickly. So this X2D Mark II is going to be launched together with a new zoom lens of the 35 to 100 in the E series. And this is aperture f2.8 to f4, which is actually pretty wide open for a zoom lens covering that range of 35mm to 100mm, which is the equivalent of about 28 to 76 mm full frame equivalent. So the camera itself, the sensor is going to be the same as the original Mark 1 of the X2D and it's using the 44 by 33 mm 100 megapixel medium format sensor. Those things that are roughly about the same, I won't really touch on, but it will actually have a full workflow, a full HDR workflow from end to end. So even the Focus Mobile 2 app is supposed to be able to handle the HDR. And why is that important? Because this camera has a 15.3 stop dynamic range, which is insane and very very, very high, probably better than what the eye can actually naturally see. And for the first time in a Hasselblad camera, it is going to feature autofocus continuous, AFC. So continuously autofocusing as you are pointing the camera. Now on the focus system, the PDAF face detect autofocus, it is now coming in at 425 zone as opposed to the previous 200 odd zones and is assisted by a LiDAR sensor. So the LiDAR is going to help and there is also a new AF illuminator which will help focusing in low light. So the same Hasselblad natural color science is going to be built in as well. Well, they call it HDR this round, but it is already HDR. 15.3 stop is the same dynamic range as the previous or rather the current X2D Mark 1. But now the file, the HDR file can actually be saved as HDR he file, HEIF or Ultra HDR JPEG file, and it can be reviewed on the new 3.6 inch screen, which is now OLED and goes up to 1400 nits screen. So it's going to be an ultra bright. Now, on the screen itself, you will see from the leaked images that now this current camera it tilts up to about 75 degrees or so, maybe 80 degrees, I don't know. But the new screen looks like it can tilt up to a full true 90 degree, meaning to say you can get a top down. Now, this camera here, the anchor the top of the screen is actually anchored to the body itself so it is if you are trying to view it from top down you will actually be blocked by the rather large viewfinder here but in the new camera the x2d mark ii the screen seems to be further out and it tilts fully 90 degrees so no part of the screen is going to be blocked by the eyepiece here the eye cup right here and on top of that it looks like it looks like it is able to be tilted downwards now this can only be confirmed when i'm there in the Hasselblad store in china next week and i will bring you that feature as soon as i can so make sure you are subscribed to this channel but i'm sure andrea will actually share that with you much earlier i mean i don't know i'm just trying to get my hands on the camera to share with you exactly how it looks like so make sure make sure you pay attention to this particular channel because I will be there in the store to actually catch the launch of it. Now, will they launch on the 26th of August? Maybe, probably. Latest 27, you will get a view and a glimpse of the new camera on my channel in this video format. Now, the camera is also touted to launch with a, listen to this, a 10-stop in-body image stabilization, 10-stop IBIS. The current best combination out there is probably about eight stop or so. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about the math behind a 10 stop IBIS, but let's assume that you're using a lens that you can only capture sharp images when you're shooting at about one over 125, right? Or one over 60 of a second. Now, at one over 60 of a second, you're going to get a sharp image. But a 10 stop image stabilization means you can actually capture the same image handheld and instead of one over 60, you can 10 stop literally mean that you can hand hold a camera and expose for 16 seconds and still get a sharp image. Now, 10 stop is really crazy. 
I don't know whether there's a mistake in the press text because it doesn't seem like anything out there is capable of anything close to 10-stop IBIS. And if they advertise 10-stop IBIS and the ability to shoot handheld and get sharp images at 16 seconds of exposure time, that is going to be one crazy camera and nothing out there is going to come close. So, you know, instead of us thinking as the X2D Mark II as something that is um, evolutionary, it is actually going to be quite revolutionary if the 10 stop IBIS is going to be true. Again, next week, you will know for sure when I cover the release of the X2D Mark II on this channel. So apparently, the X2D Mark II is also going to feature a slightly lighter body. This camera, without the lens of course, is weighing in at 895 grams. Apparently, the new body is going to be 7.5% lighter, which means it's going to come in at about 828 grams, which is well, actually, it's not that much lighter, but anything lighter than this, which is already a very light camera, given the fact that it is a medium format camera, it is going to be pretty amazing. It's going to come with a new colorway. It is a um, gray matte color. I mean, until we see, we wouldn't know. Um, the tilting OLED screen, I've covered that. Um, there will also be a 5D joystick and a customizable button at the back. So as time rolls by and as the launch date rolls closer, we are getting more and more confirmation and it looks like this is actually the confirmed specs list. Now besides that, the lens, right? So they're going to launch a new lens and previously I mentioned that the lens was going to come in at about 35 to 90 mm and maybe it's an E lens. Uh, I wasn't pretty sure then, but now it seems that there is confirmation. And while I thought it was going to be a 3.2, f3.2 to a 4.5 lens, it is now coming in at 35mm to 100mm, so even more rich, and coming in at an f-stop of 2.8 to f4, which is actually pretty crazy specs for that lens. And bear in mind, I did mention that the price, because of the e-lens, the fact that it's an e-lens, is going to be pretty expensive, but you know, I'll cover the price of the body and the lens in just a little bit, but you'll be surprised actually it is not that expensive. I did imagine it to be a little bit more expensive but it is not. The body, I thought it was going to be cheaper than the original X2D and yes it is and the range that I came up with was actually it was right smack in the middle of the range. So the new lens itself, right, the problem is that it is going to be pretty heavy. I thought it was going to come in at 700 odd grams, but it is coming over at 800 over grams. So just under 900 grams and it's pretty long. It will be the longest lens of the current uh, um, the V series and the E series, as well as the P series lens. So it's going to be one bulky lens. So the lens is going to be using one of the fastest stepping moto in the XCD lineup, which will boost the autofocus speed. And why do they need a boosted autofocus speed? Because of the lighter sensor, right? So the LiDAR sensor is going to be able to pick up and help focus very quickly. So they do need a fast stepping moto in order for the autofocus to keep up with the camera speed now. And the leaf shutter, right? So for Hasselblad, for medium format Hasselblad cameras, the shutter mechanism isn't actually built into the body. It is built into the lens. So the lens, the 35 to 100 mm lens, will have an integrated leaf shutter, which means to say you can flash sync up to one 4,000 of a second. So that is one of the fastest flash sync speed that you have access to in the whole Hasselblad range, right? There are a few other lenses that does 1 over 4,000. Again, this is a very quick video. I'll go through all the differences and all the similarities to the other lenses and the body in a more detailed video in the future. So like I said, the lens is going to be pretty long at 13.8 centimeters, 138 millimeters, and the weight is going to come in at 894 grams. So it is a rather big lens, but you think about it, right? The coverage that it covers from 35 to 100 mm, you basically don't need any other lens unless you want a wider lens, in which case you have the 20 to 35, which is also a pretty bulky and a heavy lens, but slightly lighter than the 35 to 100 that they are going to be launching. But with that reach, you are kind of like covered. You can save on bringing out the 38 mm lens, the 45, the 55, the 75, and the 90p. And on top of that, you get slightly wider view of view at 35 mm as opposed to the 38 that you have to be carrying around, and slightly more reach at 100mm as opposed to the 90V that you might be carrying around. Now let's talk a little bit about the price, right? So the price of the camera body itself, I estimated it was going to cost about 7,199 US dollars to 7,599 US dollars. 
And the body, the X2D Mark II, is rumored to be launched at 7,399, right smack in the middle of my projection. Now, the lens, and I thought it was going to cost more than $6,000, but very surprisingly, and if this report is accurate, it's going to cost $4,599, which is surprisingly cheap for a lens of that capability and of that zoom range. Now, together with it, they're going to launch some filters and they will be launching a Vendra camera backpack. And that is inspired by the Sweden's freedom to roam. Now, Sweden's freedom to roam law actually basically means that you can actually walk anywhere, you can hike and cycle anywhere, even on private land with a few exceptions. And uh, I don't know what inspired by the freedom to roam means. Uh, let's see the back and uh, I, I'll probably get it anyway since I'm there. I mean, what is the cost of the bag? 469 US dollars. I mean, shit is expensive, but you know, as compared to the camera and the lens that you're paying uh, thousands of dollars for, the bag seems like chump change, you know. So I'd like to clarify that the filter thread as I'm reading my notes now is an 86 mm filter thread. So the lens is going to be quite big and the filter uh, thread, I mean, I don't think a lot of people have 86 mm filters lying around. So if you need some filters, there'll be UV filters, ND8 filters, and CPL, circular polarizer filters that uh, Hasselblad is also launching together. And th they're going to be expensive, right? You're going to be spending between 259 pounds to 469 pounds, depending on the type of filter you're going to buy. So those are really going to be expensive. I would suggest third party ones. Um, but, you know, if you need 86mm and if you are at a store and they're launching it, then, you know, get it. I don't know many people who are using the Hasselblad branded filters. Um, but, you know, if you've got money to spend and if you've got some spare cash, then by all means, go ahead and buy that. So as parting shot for this video, I'm not going to be doing much editing. I just want to put this out there so that you guys get the information as soon as you can. Um, but one parting shot, I want to talk about the 10-stop IBIS. Now, the 10-stop IBIS is really going to be crazy, right? Like I mentioned before, if you are going to be, if you have to shoot something and get very sharp images, say you are in a, uh, you're trying to shoot portrait and you're going to get everything clear and you're trying to shoot at 1 over 250 of a second to freeze the frame, right? Now, what does a 10 stop mean? Now, 1 over 250 handheld, right? Most of the time, you're going to get a sharp image, but a 10 stop IBIS will mean that you can get the same shot clarity by holding the camera in your hands, four seconds exposure time. So can you imagine how crazy that is? Four seconds exposure time. Now, the phrase 10 stop IBIS refers to this scenario. Let's say it's hypothetical scenario where the Hasselblad X2D Mark II is able to use the in-body stabilization to provide a 10 stop reduction in the camera shake. Right, So it basically allows for significantly slower shutter speed when hand-holding a camera. However, nothing else in the market right, offers 10-stop. Nothing offers 9-stop even. Even the 8-stop is a combination of IBIS followed by coupled with the um, a lens image stabilization. So I don't know how 10-stop is going to look like. This is really, really evolutionary. So with each stop of IBIS, you can theoretically shoot at half the shutter speed, right? Uh, or rather, slower shutter speed. Using the example that I use, uh, if you're trying to shoot at 1 over 250 of a second, one stop IBIS, you can go 1 over 125. Two stop IBIS, you can go 1 over 60. Three stop, 1 over 30. And so on and so forth, until you get to 10 stop, which will land you at 4 seconds. Now, just imagine for a moment, you're trying to shoot something, and normally you're going to get sharp result at 1 over 60 of a second, which is pretty fast, right? But with a 10-stop IBIS, you can get the same image handheld 16 seconds. Now, if that is not crazy, I don't know what is crazy. Now, we have to understand the limitation of IBIS. IBIS just basically corrects the five axis, right? Whether it is turning up, down, left, right, up, down, this way, or even the row. But I will say that if the subject is moving in the first place, it's not going to help, right? Because it only corrects for your hand movement. It doesn't correct the subject itself. Right, but regardless, 10 stop IBIS, I am really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to the OLED screen, the uh, the lens that they're going to be launching, even the screen that is going to tilt fully to 90, or maybe it will tilt downwards. We don't know, right? Um, like I said, I'll be covering this camera when it launches. I'll get my hands on it. I will shoot right in the store to show you this camera. So stay subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video.